Hello, it's time to shoot a new uh, intro for uh, the channel and uh, here I am with my beautiful daughter Aisha. She's going to help me with this one and uh, yeah, it's not going to be what you guys expect. Is it, Sha? No. Nah. <laughs> no more EDM. Oh I did nothing. <laughs> now it's time for metal. Who? Is who I really am, basically. I'm a metaler from West Auckland, the old. Let's do this, yay! Hey everyone, it's been a while, but I'm back with a tutorial on how to use the latest Figma properties feature to make a button component. And if you look at where I am now, I've been using a button master that is nested inside the other components. There, you can see it there. And then it's been given the variants that control things like its size, its type, like primary, secondary, or text, the state, enabled or pressed, and the icon placement. So left, right, solo, whatever you got there. You know, and that's been a good approach up until now, but with the properties feature, you can't really use master or base components in this way. So Let's just keep that button on the left hand side, which I've now called Legacy, and start creating the other one from scratch. Okay, from here onwards, I'm going to be using my own design system called Scale. I'm going to add a link to it where you can preview it in the description below. And that's going to give me the styles and semantic tokens I use. And you might be using your own design system or UI kit with its own styles and way of applying, you know, semantic tokens and that. But this is more about how we're going to construct this button and use the properties feature to turn icons on and off, change the instance of the icon, change the text label, and also couple that with some variants to change it between those states. So let's start by hitting T on our keyboard, tapping anywhere, I'm just gonna type in button here. That brought up the text tool. I'm gonna go and change this to label number one, and it's text to text on brand. I'm gonna group that call this content. I'm going to hit auto layout, which is going to turn it into a frame and then add some auto layout features. We can tweak those in a minute. I'm going to group it again, just call this button and hit auto layout again. At this point, I'm going to add 16 on the left and right padding and 12 on the top and bottom. Then I'm going to change its fill to button primary. There we go. We're almost there. I'm going to change this to 12 and then open up the uh, independent corners and change this to iOS right on 60% there. There we go. Okay, let's get auto layout right by checking with the existing button. Okay, so this has top center alignment with down and then 8, 16 and 12. So let's just check that here. Down, 8, 16, and 12, fantastic. The content region inside that has got to the left, horizontal with only four. All right. There you go, left, space between four, and that should be about it. Okay, we're gonna select it now and then go create component. That is now going to be available in the Assets tab, but you can also use the new Resources section here and then just type in Button. Let's drag that out over here so we can see all the changes that are happening to the component that we're making and all of the uh, variants and properties. Let's make sure it works. It's going to type in it. Just arrow to the right and go Label. Okay, and we want to be able to resize it and have that label stick in the middle. So this makes the button kind of like a dual use button where we can use it just for the width of the content that's inside it, or we can stretch it out like that, like an app button, which normally takes up the whole content width. Let's just reset this. Let's go back to the component. I'm going to select the label there, select the content, and then change vertical resizing to fixed height because no matter what's inside this, we want it to remain the same, right? And inside this region, we're gonna add two placeholder icons, which we can do from the assets panel or from here, 
but I'll do it from the assets panel this time. I'm going to type in place, which should bring up the 24 pixel version. There's a 96 one there, but I'm just going to drag that in. Go back to layers. Okay, it's on the left hand side. I'm going to duplicate that and then move that over to the right hand side of the button. Okay, now my icons are set up where I have a color layer and I can just select that and then come over here and change this to icon on brand. And I can right click on that and then go copy paste as, copy properties and then go over to here and do the same. Okay, so now they're both set up that way. Okay, so the first property we wanna add is on that first icon. So we wanna be able to turn it off and on, right? And in the layer section, you can go to the right and you can see apply a Boolean property. Let's hit that, then change this to left icon. Tell it to create property. And you can see that here, all right? It's like an eye icon for it's being shown. Okay, now we wanna come up to where it says placeholder and go apply instance swap property. Let's hit that. We're gonna select this name and hit control command space, which is gonna bring up the emojis. And I use this one, which is downwards arrow with tip rightwards. Okay. And then just go left icon instance. All right, create property. And with just that set up, we can go over to the instance and then turn off that or turn it back on and change its icon. So let's just change it to something like profile. Ooh. There we go, it's coming together. Let's do the same for the right icon. Go over here, hit that, go right icon. Go up to here and then do the same thing. Ooh, why'd you open up there? Right icon instance. Let's select that uh, label while we're at it and then go over to content and apply text property. All right, so for this one, I like to use the emoji where it's a pencil, as if you're entering or editing information. Let's create that property. And then the spinner just needs to be uh, turned off and on. So let's change the layer to spinner. All right, now if we look at the instance, everything's been set up now. We can turn that off and on, same thing there. We can change this one to whatever you like, we can turn the spinner off. Great, you're not really gonna have an icon on the left and the right hand side, so you might wanna write something like that in your documentation on how to use your button, where we just have this or just have that. Let's go and select the component and just clean up the order of this. So kinda of want the first thing to be the left icon, then the right icon, okay, and then the label itself goes above the text that becomes the label. Yeah, and then the spinner at the bottom. Okay, we might select it again and move label below the left icon. So now it's got the correct hierarchy. Yep, left icon, label, label text, right icon and spinner. Here we go. You know, and that's it. We've set up the properties. So as far as they're concerned, that's all done. But what about the variance? So we've got these different states and different sizes over here. So let's go and select the component and get it back to this state by just turning off the left icon, turning off the right icon and turning off the spinner. So let's select it again, go over here and add property variant, change this to size and then go to the right and go edit property and change default to L for large. Let's go add another variant. This one could be called type. And let's add primary there. And then another one and call this state. And default will do. Let's just add that. So now we've got all the variants we need, which are large and there'll be a small one as well. Uh, primary, secondary, and text, and then default, hover, and pressed. Now I don't have a disable button, but you can add one if you want. And with that done, we're gonna select this inside it and press the plus down there. Let's move this down. Go like that. Grab that again, go up to resize to fit. And with that selected, we're gonna go over to default and add new. 
change this to hover, do it again and change this one to pressed. Okay, now I'm gonna select that component, come down to the fill and change that to primary hover, and then select it again and change this to primary pressed. Okay, if we go over here and reset the instance, we can now change that over here. Okay, now just keep in mind that if your icons change color when they're hovered over or they become active, that you're gonna to have to change that here too. So you'd have to go into here, change this to a different color, but mine are gonna stay white whether they are in the default or hovered state or press state. So I'm just gonna reverse out of there. Let's just select this and stretch it. So all the new variants that we're gonna add, it's gonna end up having some space and we don't have to resize anything. With these three selected, I'm just gonna hold down Option, Shift, and then drag until they're about 32 away from there. I'm gonna drag all of these to the bottom here. And then I'm gonna add another type called secondary. Okay, and you guessed it. I'm gonna go and change this to button secondary this to button secondary hover and this to button secondary pressed. Now the label has to change now. So let's select all of these and change that here. Let's go to text secondary. Okay, now the icon in there is gonna to have to change to match that, right? So let's go open the color for those. They're hidden, but we are pretty confident we're gonna be able to select these like this and the way I'm doing that is doing command shift select every time I've got all of them selected now I can change this to icon enabled now if I change this to secondary and then turned on oh and you can see that trying to tidy up everything before it's just been reset so let's do that again we've got the three up the top, we've got left icon, left icon instance, we've got the label there, there, there. Okay, now we're done again. All right, I've got left icon. I can change that to whatever I like. I can turn the right icon on and off. A spinner can come on. Okay, the spinner at that point, it's gonna be a different color too. So let's select the spinner, like the actual spinner component in each of these and change it to primary. Now that's blue and you might want to change that to black so it matches, but if you're going to turn everything else off and then change this to default, then it's going to look just fine. All right, let's reset that. Okay, now we want the text button. So let's close all those layers again, duplicate this again. So now we've got 32, drag all these to the bottom here and then type Add new, text. Okay, we're gonna select this first layer and its style is actually gonna be text link. Okay, and these two are going to be text link hover. Okay, the text button in its default state doesn't have a background, so let's go and remove that. The hover state does. We can change that here, text hover. And then we can select this and go text pressed. Okay, now the icons that we're using, as you can see, remain blue the whole time. So let's go and change their colors. To select it. Okay, so now if we go here and select text, and then we change this to hover, and then we turn on the left icon, there you go. And we could probably do with an icon brand hover state there as well. So this blue becomes the same as the label. Let's reset that again. And if we just tidy this up a bit, we have basically got, let's give this 64. Everything's a multiple of eight for me, yeah. We've basically got everything we need 
for our new button except for its new size, right? So we need a small version. You can have medium and small, that's up to you. I'm just gonna go directly to small. I'm gonna change this back to primary, change this back to default. Play around with the icons to see how everything's going. Yep, all right. Let's resize this. Okay, let's command drag to select all of them and then do option shift drag again. With all of them selected, let's in the layers panel, drag them all to the bottom there. Okay, let's select them again. And now we're gonna add size S for small and then come over here and change this to eight and this to four because that label inside is gonna change from label one to label two, which is only 12 pixels. Okay, and what just happened there? We can see that this is not vertically centered, right? So we can change that by selecting the content region here, hitting this target, which is gonna select everything, which I guess is Figma's way of helping us out because we used to be able to do that in just one component using that button master. But with all of them selected, I can now change this from top left to left alignment. And then I can select all of the labels for the small buttons and change that from label to label two. Okay, let's just select all of them again and change this to eight. Go back, make sure it's still on that nice 60% version. Okay, for now, let's just see how the button behaves. We've got large, small, primary, secondary. Let's change this back to large. All right, let's turn on a left icon and change this to plus. Let's just add account here. We might have a button for like a banking app. Let's have that there. And since we added that text property, you can also come over here and just type it like that. Can add a right icon, we can turn the spinner on, but we don't want to. And from here, we can change it to hover or pressed. Go back to primary. You see how the icon changed there back to white. It's pretty cool. We can change this to default. We can turn the right icon on and the left icon off and actually change this one to something else. So the plus could be on that side instead. And we can turn everything off and just have the spinner. Now I mentioned earlier that you might wanna make your own custom version of the spinner so you can have a round one like this in addition to these buttons, but I think that's gonna be okay because if I'm using a button like, let's say, submit, and it's gonna be app width, something like that, and then I go into its spinner state, let's just turn that on and then turn the label off, and that's what it would look like when it's making its back end call. So let's just reset it because I'm gonna make a icon only button. I'm gonna turn on the left icon, turn off the label, and then change its instance to add account. So before we had a add account button, now we've got an add account icon button. So this might be a cleaner way of actually doing it and it could be secondary or text-based. It can just be off to the side and then the label can be on the left. So now we have a button component we can place into our designs change whatever we want it to do there to become the button that we want, and we're done. And that's pretty badass, right? So thanks Figma for the property feature. I've been using it in my other components as well. So if we come down to something like a row component, I only need one of them, and it does everything I need like this, turning on a check mark, turning off that icon, turning off the secondary text, then the switch on the right, then adding an icon on the right, turning off the check mark, turning on an avatar, you get the picture. You can basically do what have taken you hundreds of variants before with one component. A lot cleaner, a lot more freedom for the designer, and yeah, and I think it's a good way forward, especially if you're putting a design system together like this, where you wanna have as little maintenance as possible. Okay, that's it for this one. Thanks for coming back. Like I said in the beginning, go check out the scale design system. Hope you're looking after yourselves out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.